Collaboration is essential, actually, in the kind of work we do. And the idea of collaboration is being expanded with artists who are starting to work on the networks. So proximity becomes a very different concept. And Araya Harvey and Michael Semi are an example of this. In fact, it's a kind of a love story, I have to say. Uh, they <coughs> met over email and they started working on a project online without meeting each other on another project and then finally they met and they merged <laughs> both as people and as work and I, I asked them how to introduce them and it's the same kind of thing, it's a oneness. I, I was familiar first with Aurea's work and actually met her in New York and she was very interested in kind of sensual, tactile qualities, visual qualities of uh, her work on the net. And it was actually stunning work. Um, then as some time passed and I went back to Entropy 8 and it became, what, what is, what is it called now? Entropy 8 Zuper. Entropy 8 Zuper. Um, and I sensed this big shift. It still looked absolutely gorgeous. It was much more dynamic and something was going on. So they're here to tell us what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome Araya and Michael. <laughs> Hello. Um, as she said, I'm Aria Harvey and this is Michael Semin, my partner. And, and the way, first of all, let me just explain the posters we noticed all say Entropy 8, but you know, we have to explain our name a little bit, I think, first. First of all, I have um, been a web designer and I guess artist online since 1995 um, with a site called entropy8.com. And it was um, my private website basically, but which um, seemed to be like a way of catalyzing uh, interactions with other people online and also as, she was, as Victoria was saying, showing uh, my sort of penchant, my leanings towards um, creating a tactile space for viewers online, a space where people can come and sort of uh, feel, feel the space inside the screen, was, was kind of how I always thought of it. Um, Michael is, has been running a site called Zuper.com since 1995 as well as it happens. Um, he can tell you more about his background, but at any rate, when we merged, we made our, the title of our site entropy8zuper.org. So to us, it was an equation almost. Uh, uh, or very much an equation, .com plus .com equals .org. You know? so, and also we didn't want it to, to, to boil it down to something simple because we felt that um, the, the type of relationships between two uh, locations, two domains, was kind of a complicated thing and we didn't want to make it so easy as you know, calling it E8Z or something like that. We were like, no, 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 no. You know, we're, we're not about creating this sort of simplistic space online. We're like, we'll leave that to the e-commerce sites. You know, this is about um, something which is a real union and so we decided to leave it the long title, entropy8zuper.org instead. And um, our slogan is kind of, has been a, a JavaScript equation as well, which is if one plus one equals one, then E8Z equals true. So. It's <laughs> sort of also reflecting our uh, our desire um, to to use code to communicate. So um, I'll let Michael tell you more about where he comes from. Yeah, uh, my, I'm I'm trained as a graphic designer. Um, I uh, very traditional print graphics. I use photocopiers as like the most high tech technology I had at the time in Belgium. And um, after that, I bought a computer for my graphic design and started playing with it, 3D animation and some interactive uh, offline stuff. And then I discovered the internet at about the same time as Aria did with Net a little before Netscape 1.1. And when Netscape 1.1 arrived, I made my first artworks um, under the name of Group C Belgium. And, and published them a little later on the other web uh, site. And uh, at the time it was still called Zuper Graphics and I was a graphic designer. And then I met, had my own domain and shortened it to zuper.com because it was easier and I discovered that um, um, I wasn't a graphic designer anymore. So I changed the name completely, not just the URL. Um, I dropped everything. I 
I was doing offline to concentrate completely on the internet. One of the things I was doing um, at the time was with a group of artists uh, that um, based around a, a guy from LA here, Kenneth Aronson. He did the hell.com group and that's where I met Aria. Yeah. And we started um, working online on a project called Skin on Skin on Skin, which we released on Hell first. And we started making our site. Yeah. And in a total coincidence, we met in the, well, we, coincidentally, we had to go to um, two different things um, in the San Francisco area uh, about a year ago, actually. And we launched our site, Entropy yeah. Super. Yeah. So. I think the important thing for us to really get into is we both, um, the way in which we both felt a real uh, union with our work and the reason why we really felt comfortable with each other from the start in working with each other online, having not met in a physical space, was that we both saw the internet as something more, as, uh, more than uh, just a communications tool. We saw computers as more than just a tool, you know, that whole thing that people usually say. The computer, oh, it's just a tool, it's a medium, it's a thing that you use between, you know, it's, it's something that just makes, facilitates your desires or something. But we saw the internet as being a space where you could, could actually live in a sense. Um, and it's been, that has been my experience at least um, when I was in New York City and um, I kind of, my background is in sculpture and performance and um, I had a webcam set up in my in my apartment. I had the good fortune of having a T1 line at the time, so I had a, a server. Yeah, so I had a Swiss serving out of my apartment, and it was a tiny little New York apartment. You know, I don't know if you're familiar with how small these places can get, but it was uh, the net became my way of working because or my main tool for working uh, at that at, in the beginning because it was. Uh, a way for me to get out of that small space that I was in, not being able to afford a studio, you know, not having the money to buy things that I needed. You know, I had a computer and I had the internet, and to me that became the space in which to work. Not just um, to communicate with others alone, but also to really feel others' presence and to also project my presence online. And so that became a, a part of my daily activities was to, uh, to either give a sort of not really performance online, because most of the time I was sort of just sitting there, but a lot of times just watching the coming and going of people on the log files, of really feeling um, that this was some place, the, the, the ways that I emailed with other people all around the world at the time really had a strong effect on my, uh, my, my everyday life. I would be hanging out with my analog friends, as I called them, and, um, and feeling like, oh, well, did you see? No, they haven't seen that because that's online. You know, and just feeling like there was this whole other alternate uh, universe in a sense. So when, uh, when I was a part of the Hell Project, it's, it was people from all over the world getting together to collaborate on art projects. And it became sort of, and there was an email list and everything, and we all just talked to each other all day. I mean, you have like a bunch of people who work on the web all the time, and they're used to email. They're, they're, email is just like you know uh, talking, you know, in a sense. It's just, it, and so people are constantly emailing things to each other, and we're constantly talking about this or that, and and it it's really starts to feel like you know the location doesn't matter. It's not about um, well, there's a physical new location. proximity. It's yeah, there's a new this, location. This kind of this, this, well, it's not a space. I don't want to call it a space, but. We, we're just sitting in our offices, and, and we're not really there, in a way. And that's, uh, I mean, and we, we can exchange all um, human interactions through that medium, in a way, Yeah. Uh, well, up to sex. <laughs> up to that point. But anyway, so Michael and I met online in the, in the sense that uh, there was a chat program in between us. But at the same time, it really felt like through the, the use, making work together, there was something uh, deeper going on in a, in a way. So uh, what's playing behind us here is one of the things that sort of evolved throughout um, our beginning communications. And um, it's called Wirefire. It's something that we, um, a performance actually, that we do online every, every Thursday night. We, uh, we now do this 
performance together in the same space because I have since moved to Belgium to be with Michael. But um, there was a lot of times when I was in New York and he was in Belgium and we longed for a way to communicate with each other that was that more directly expressed how we felt about the medium itself, how we felt. Uh, how we felt in the medium. How we felt in the medium, yeah. It's, it, it was, the text didn't quite do it, you know, uh, in, in terms of just, you're sitting there and you're typing how, what you want to say, but you, everyone's had that feeling when you write an email that you, it, it just, something just doesn't come across in the translation. When you, when you know somebody's reading this and they misunderstand your words, they don't get your sarcasm, they don't get the, the, the your deeper meaning. Um, and so we wanted to make something that would allow us to communicate online uh, that would add an extra element of, of, of texture, in a sense, a way of, of, of uh, finding something that goes beyond words. To us, that led us to images, that led us to, to audio. And, um, and, uh, and it just really, to, we were able to develop a whole system around this idea of uh, yeah, The problem with online communication is that you can't feel each other. And, and I think we tried to do that with the HTML and stuff like that to make the other move the cursor in a way that it feels like almost they're touching your body and that kind of interaction um, resulted into the site skin on skin on skin. Uh, yeah. I, I would say that, that our work as designers uh, for clients has uh, always been a little bit at odds with what the client feels a website ought to be to a certain extent. We, we kind of have always looked at websites as uh, something that the viewer has to feel. Not only it's, it's interaction, but we want to go, in, we want to get into people's heads with it to a certain extent. I mean, we've both had the experience of uh, at being at odds with clients who don't see how, yes, it's necessary to, you know, have certain types of complex programming, you know, and they have to build that into the budget and, you know, or, or just a way to, um, make it so that the, the screen is not only uh, interactive, but reactive, perhaps. And, uh, and Well, in a way, we're very traditional. We want to um, express certain emotions through this medium. And it's strange that not many people are using it for that reason. I mean, it's very normal in books and movies to do that, but people don't do that online. And I think, or, or, or with interactive media. And I think interactive media are just very good at that because they allow more participation of the user than a book or a movie does. So in that sense, we're very conservative. Design is more conservative than, the, more conservative than our clients in a way because they, they want some kind of computer interface, which we're not that interested in. We're more interested in using the computer to do something with humans instead of just using the computer to do something with the computer. <laughs> yeah. That's not really interesting to us. So at any rate, um, what we're going to show you today is a little bit of our work. Um, I'll kind of start with a little bit of history of, of us, uh, ways that we've worked together, and then um, move more into our current site, which is at entropyatuper.org, as I said before, and um, how uh, that site has evolved um, and become a way for us to sort of translate um, our lives into into this into this space and into this uh, to try and get people to see some sort of subtlety you know it's not to us net art is not just it's not blinking pixels and complicated interface for the sense of it being a complicated interface because we feel like the complicated interface is not the point you know um, we once had I once had a comment from someone in, on some list or other talking about how well it's it's click and be amazed you know <laughs> and we're like well yeah well if it, amazement is what you're looking for then that's all you're going to get out of it however if you allow yourself to, uh, to relax and to become, a, um, to not just go for that click reaction. You know, we're trying to, to sort of in some ways be against that. Um, re the reactive, like, the reaction of the user to just click, click, click. Where's the link? Where's the link? Must find the link. You know, I, I often say I'm anti-click in a certain <laughs> sense because um, that, to me, that's not interaction. You know, and to, it seems a lot of websites, that's, that's all you need for interaction is the link, it's linked to the next point, you know, but we're sort of uh, wanting people to slow down and to take a moment to soak it in and to, to view it as something that's more experiential than, uh, than most websites tend to be.
I guess. <laughs> yeah, the clicking monkey syndrome. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, I'll. Uh, Start with one thing here. Don't we want to show scan, scan, scan? Do we? I don't know. Do you have it? Yeah, somewhere. Just a few things in my room. Well, I'll show the. Um, this thing first, the office. Oh, okay. Ria is going to show the first um, kind of application we made to communicate with each other. Um, we called it an office because it was like a place where we met, communicated about the project we were working on together. Um, this is a version of the office we made for the show that is currently at the Postmasters Gallery in New York. Yeah. So it doesn't have all the original elements, but here you had, um, they're gone now, but there are two images of our webcams and our clocks. I was in Belgium and she was in New York and our chat interface and here we had on both sides actually in the actual interface at the time links to projects we were working on or documents or sketches, stuff like that. So basically we were just starting to, when we first wanted to work together we had to find some way to, to make it normal to do so. We had to, it was like we needed something more complicated than just emailing each other because that just got to be so, uh, uh, it, it, there was no way to like, for, there was no immediacy, I guess. And so we needed a chat program. We're like, okay, chat. So we, we put together a chat and they were like, I already had the webcam set up. He got a webcam and he, so we had the two images and it was almost like sitting in the same room together. We're like, okay, this is a good way of, uh, of working with each other. And, and it, everything went well every day. You know, the, the time difference, we, I, I sort of changed my schedule a little bit. You know, he sort of had his schedule and we um, sort of made it so that we could sit in the office together at different times. I was on a T1, he was on a dial up, so there were issues about that. And like, you know, and so we, we, we sort of worked it out. <laughs> we sort of worked it out so that, uh, so that we could spend a certain amount of time in the office. And we actually got work done. It was like, oh, I just finished this. And I'd like put up a link, an email link, I mean, a, a hypertext link in the, in the chat. And he could go look at it. And then immediately we'd get feedback from each other. It's not so different than the way a lot of people work in, you know, analog offices, actually. But um, the way that this, this actually is part of what fueled Wirefire, which I'll explain more in a moment. But when did we do this? This was, this was last yeah. year. Yeah. Like February. February. You guys already, or no, 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 no. We had, we had, we had only no, no. We still haven't met in person. I mean, we didn't. We were working together for maybe three or four months. We made two sites together before actually even meeting each other in person. And so it was it was sort of crucial to have this way of uh, going back and forth with the work that we had. And um, one of the things that we made was uh, this work, which uh, I'll show you just a little bit of right now because it's a little long and. Uh, to get into the whole thing, but. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My uh, alert sound is a gunshot, so <laughs> I'll just uh, apologize for that. <laughs> sent to Aria when after a first uh, video conferencing chat and these are like little pieces of that chat yeah. Yeah. and then she responded yeah needless to say I was affected and so <laughs> so then my, this became my response to him so it, at that point the email sort of stopped and it became more about um, lying on a scanner. Lying on a scanner. <laughs> no, it became more about finding ways to to get across what we were trying to say to each other without being without using words. I guess so. We called it. Uh, we we coined the term DHTML love because it was very uh, I don't know personal. 
No, this was this only for us. Secret. It was it was a, in a secret location. <laughs> it's called Seaside Motel. It's called Hell. Seaside <laughs> Motel. <laughs> 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 and so no one had seen it up until it was done. I mean. It, Um, not, we, at, not in the beginning. Not in the only beginning. After a while. It was only after a while that we think, well, maybe we should make it public. Then the question became how to make it public, because we didn't want it to just be this kind of thing where free for all. Oh, everybody, come see this thing that we, you know, it wasn't because it was so personal. Needless to say, it was, um, it was a little difficult, a little painful to think about it possibly being public in a way. In fact, when it was on the hell.com server, someone found it once before we password protected and someone found it and it wrote to everyone on hell list, oh, everybody come look at this thing Aria and Michael are doing. We were like, oh, we were horrified. We were, it felt like a total invasion. And so we, we had to find a way to, um, to release it without it becoming completely public. Um, What's this space? This, this is his. This is um, where I live. That was where he lived in, in, in Bronze, Belgium. So every so often I would get an email with a new link in it. Every so often I'd make a new piece and he would get it, you know. And click it. Click it and reload. It's a little So much you wouldn't understand. just a little bit of that and well, the way we ended up releasing it um, was as a pay-per-view event and with the philosophy of well porn sites have been doing it for a long time so why shouldn't we <laughs> and also because no one else had really done a pay-per-view net art event and we were curious if it would work and yeah well I'll get to that and point. And we didn't mind if, if nobody saw and it. And we didn't mind if nobody saw <laughs> it so we were like well this is a good opportunity to, to try something out and see what happens and uh, and it, 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 it was sort of a mixed uh, success. Uh, it, it worked in the sense that people, you know, everyday people who sort of surf the web are not the kind of, necessarily the kind of people who come to your site looking for artwork. They come to your site, you know, and that's it. And whatever they see while they're there is up to you. Whether you want to call it art, whether you want to call it design, whether you want to call it commerce, whatever, they, they're, they're pretty much open to whatever you're about to flash in front of them. And that, that, to that extent, it was a wonderful success because people who came there were surprised um, to pay for something and then to get something in return that was like, I mean, a lot of people sort of related it to paying for a movie or something like that. In fact, it was cheaper than a movie when we charged for it. And, um, and they were truly affected by it and truly got where we were coming from when they sort of read a little bit about it or, or you know, because we had a little bit of informational text on the site, or if they um, didn't know anything and they just sort of related it to their own lives, which is exactly what we were hoping for when we released it to the public, was that people would sort of understand the pain of it or the, you know, the, the desire and the longing and all that stuff, but inside the, the context of the network, you know, and that was the thing. The problem came in with, with basically other net artists, you know, being completely opinionated about the whole thing and, and unwilling to see. Um, which was a nice side effect. Which was a ni an interesting <laughs> side effect, yeah. But not willing to see that it's, that when you charge money for something, it's not necessarily just about the money. You know what I mean? Or, or not understanding that. Um, well, they want information to be free. They want information to be free when this is not information. But anyway, it, it just became sort of a weird um, situation as far as that was concerned. Um, with other people who are in the same field as us, in a way. Yeah, you know, for us, colleagues. the interesting thing of using the the net as um, as our medium is that we're both. It's it's both it, it's it's lots of different things at the same time as Ari already mentioned. It's a communication tool, but it's also the tool we use to make our work as well as the tool we use to to show our work. It's not like in the traditional artwork where you make a 
painting, and then you have to find a gallery to actually show that painting yeah. to somebody. So in that sense, um, an artist can be his own gallery, and so um, find, uh, cut out the middleman, as I say. Yeah. And um, uh, well, there's a lot of criticism on that. Artists are not to, supposed to do a gallerist's work, for instance. But it was also, you know, we didn't make a mint on it, you know, in terms of pay-per-view. But people could understand that the, what they were paying for was going to help support artwork and to help support our production, which I thought was a really beautiful thing that there were people who were willing to do that, people who were willing to, to you know, get something in return, but also realize that they, what they were doing was helping support the arts to a certain extent, which was really nice. And we got a lot of uh, uh, great emails of support in, in as far as that was concerned, too. Um, anyway. How much was it? When we first time, we released it twice. We had two showings. First time it was $5, and the second time it was seven fifty. And um, And, you know, it was, it was just very interesting to us, I think. And, and if not profitable, but, <laughs> but interesting. At the same. It's now closed. It's, it's not up online. It's not, like I said, it's not the kind of thing we just wanted to leave open. It's, it's you know, it's, it's there when we, we choose to release it. And we probably will release it again. Um, we just can't decide, like, how, in what way we want to release it. Because it's, well, there's a whole other, the first part we released um, was only really part one. I mean, it went on after we, because we, we still weren't living together yet. And so we still continued the, the work after we released the first batch of um, files of it. And so there's this a whole other part of the work that has never been shown online at all. And so we're, we're wanting to maybe do something with that. But it gets, it gets really ugly after a while. I mean, this was all, the first part was very emotional, and, and, but in, a, in sort of a, a dreamy kind of way. But then after a while, real, it, it co sort of clashed with reality and me leaving New York and um, all the things that were going on in both of our lives. And so then it, get, it gets really like uh, even more personal to a certain extent, even more sort of painful and ugly. And so we're trying to decide in what way we want to release that part of it. Because then after I got to Belgium, we sort of ceased production on it. And um, Well, in favor of the rest of our site. In favor of the rest show. of our site, which, we, yeah, which we're going to show next. Yeah. But, you know, so we're, we might release it again, but we're trying to decide in what way we want to do that. That's all. So, um, yeah, that was the one, the one of the sites we made. The second thing that we made together before we met was the um, first chapter of entropy 8 We took the, it was kind of a, a complete, I don't know, coincidence that we decided to use uh, the Bible as sort of the theme for a mythology um, because we were feeling really, uh, everything felt sort of uh, like make-believe to a certain extent, but at the same time more real than real to us while we were having this communication of An not epic, seeing each other. In a way. We, epic, Because yeah. we, we uh, what we were doing was very complimentary, and, and we had really, like, online these kinds of conversations where one person would say what the other was going to say, and it was like, sort of like, this was meant to be, like, very, ooh, scary, <laughs> what was going on. So we chose a very um, epic thing, like the Bible, to start working on our, on our uh, work together. Yeah. And first and one is, is uh, was, first yeah. book of the Bible, Genesis, yeah. the birth of our cooperation. But we really, I, I mean, for me, it was very significant to sort of begin a mythology in a, in a sense because we, uh, it, it really was kind of a feeling of, uh, of something beginning that was very significant and had a lot of implications in both of our lives and we didn't want it to, we wanted to sort of make something that could not be trivialized to us, you know, I don't know, but anyway, here we go. This is Genesis.
in San Francisco, and uh, and we launched it the day we met in person. And so up to then, there had just been this splash screen that said, you know, coming in three days, coming in two days, coming in one day. And every day, we'd look at the countdown and we'd be like, okay, so we're going to launch this thing <laughs> when we meet in person. It was this total moment of, of, uh, of, of fear, in a sense, because you're like, well, what if I meet him in person and I don't like him or, you know, something like that, which I didn't knew wasn't a possibility, but it was still just something that comes into your mind. But really knowing that you know someone through digital means and really feeling like you know the essence of the person um, without that sort of physical first impression that you have where you meet someone, you go, oh, well, what's he wearing green for? Oh, I really hate that cologne or something like that. It's, it's like you skip all those things and you get towards the, the sort of cerebral um, knowing of someone. And that was what we tried to share in making this website was the experience of, uh, of meeting and really feeling that, uh, that connection between each other. So um, since we've been together and we've, uh, in Belgium, we've, made, we've gone on with the story that that one starts, that Genesis starts. And so, of course, the next logical progression was, oh, Exodus. It seemed perfect because this Exodus is the story of me leaving New York City and, you know, how... Uh, how it was sort of, will it, would I ever get out of New York City, kind of escape New York City, <laughs> it was a sense of it, um, really feeling like, well, was she going to leave, is she going to leave or is she not going to leave her home and come to this strange place? I mean, I had never been to Europe, let alone to Belgium, so therefore it was uh, kind of that leap of faith that, uh, that was allowed to me because of the internet in a sense. I mean, in being online every day, I had this feeling like location didn't exist, location didn't matter to a certain extent, um, physical location. And so, to me, getting on a plane and going to another place seemed like natural to, in, a, in a weird sort of way. It seemed like it wasn't that risky. But I knew realistically that this was a very strange thing for me to be doing. And so it was, uh, that's kind of what, where Exodus takes us. <laughs> and Michael could sort of speak on his uh, kind of... <laughs> Yeah, uh, Aria keeps up. forgetting that she had a, a four-year relationship with a guy in New York, and I had um, yeah, we a can't woman leave that out, lived with we? a woman for nine years, had two children with her. That kind of complicated the situation. So it was a very sordid affair. It was to say very the least. painful. Yeah, <laughs> sordid affair to say the least. But <laughs> yeah, technicalities, right? <laughs> oh, 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 sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was just saying that this, uh, you are showing everything offline, so like from that from that laptop computer. Yeah. Maria thinks it's faster. I think it's how faster. Is, how, <laughs> but it's yeah, really, so how is the how is the experience compared with the uh, like online situation? Well, it depends on your connection. I could show it live. I was more worried about crashing and things like that. I mean, I it was just a, you know wanting to play it safe and show it offline, but. I mean, I prefer things to be shown live. I mean, we could get into that whole conversation, actually, if you want, just because I feel like, um, in fact, the show that we have in New York City, we insisted on everything being um, um, shown from its original location online, and we wouldn't show anything like prefab on the computer because we felt like the location of being on the network was the most important thing. You know, but g being that this is sort of a live presentation and me knowing all the things that can go wrong with servers doing live pr presentations, I just chose to show it off the laptop out of a, uh, out of, but, but not the connection. Yes, but we're not having a net art experience here. Yeah. You're like sitting there and we're like standing here. Yeah, this here. is very far so from a net art experience. <laughs> very different. Really. <laughs> which is another issue that we like to deal, like to play with, which is that, you know, showing showing net artworks in a gallery or museum um, situation just becomes like a completely different thing. This work has sort of like two identities. Uh, does it have a different identity when it's shown offline like this compared with the, all the, all the uh, like additional features of when it's shown online? Like I'm absolutely sure that I couldn't get it like smoothly like this. I'm absolutely from sure. From my place in, the, in, the, in Finland. That's possible. But that's the chance you take, kind of, you know? And, uh, and we kind of, in a way, I, I definitely feel like that's part of it. Um, I feel like the, the incidental things that happen, 
to reviewing the work is definitely a part of, of viewing it. Um, being able to go off and check your email, you know, I'm just showing this yeah, to you straight through. I, I think mean, you're, you're overestimating the difference because we really program the things to be smooth. Sounds are loading before a scene is loaded, stuff like that. So it is pretty smooth, even if you have a pretty well, slow connection. Yeah. 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 All the oh, this, Genesis, this yeah, is the but not Skin on Skin on Skin. Exodus is online too, and then the next chapter, Leviticus, was launched like a month ago. Yeah, this is live. Okay. Yeah, it's better this, it's much better this way. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> fanfare, but each section of, of the site, um, of each of the chapters, you go through sort of a, a narrative, and then at the end, there's the portion which we call the ecstasy, and so this is the ex exodus, ex ecstasy, um, the, the ecstasy of Genesis was the red screen that you saw at the end, which is sort of like a termination point, where you can, um, where you sort of get the, just a resolution of of the entire scene and also where we just have a little fun at the end after dealing with sort of like rough spots of, that we're trying to express in our lives we sort of just have this point where we relax and realize that that we're really trying to to make something together and to really just enjoy that <laughs> and uh, and not feel so exposed all the time I don't know why we choose to sort of put all of these things out there about ourselves. Maybe we're both just exhibitionists. Maybe, uh, maybe we just feel like this is something that is underrated or not really seen in online um, life. Uh, some, where you know people tend to think of things as being, uh, I don't know, sort of like something that that is should be undercover or you know a relationship that is online shouldn't. People don't like to talk about love. People don't like to deal with that, you know, in, in emotion, I guess, in, in some works online. I'm not going to say that it's not something that's, not be, that's being explored, but at the same time, it's like taboo in a way. And we kind of feel like taking something which is so banal as like an affair or something so common as, as being in love with someone or common and rare, you know, and trying to translate that into something that 
everyone can sort of look in on and and be affected by or, or relate to their own lives is, is cut something very significant for us and and we just wanted to do it so it's like it's up there online and if people choose to look at it we're happy to let them see it but it it, it becomes a situation a lot of times where people want to label it art and we ourselves have called ourselves artists at this point which we never hadn't done before actually we were both designers and so now it just becomes this, this, this semantic issue also but I mean I just feel like it's important to point out that the art of it is is coincidental to a certain extent and something that we have a hard time dealing with the the idea of um, it being taken offline or being acquired or being you know wanting uh, other um, organizations or institutions wanting the work to take it away from its original context is 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 really difficult um, because we want it to stay in that space I want it to have a lifespan if, if we lose our servers or if you know time goes on and, and the site is gone and forgotten about I mean I strongly believe that things never die online to a certain extent I mean it has a lifespan in that eventually that server may not go may not be there but elements that there's been people online who have taken screenshots of our work and remixed it and made it into like other things you know which is something that I'm sure everyone who makes websites has experienced but it just becomes this thing where something we made out of love has offspring <laughs> you know and that just to me becomes something that's that's really meaningful more meaningful than it being archived in someone's collection or anything like that you know and uh, if someone wants to you know people have taken entire sections of it and I think some guy like noticed that it didn't work with IE5 for the Mac and rewrote our, our part of it and we we're like okay <laughs> thanks you know and it's like that to me is part of the life of the site and part of our, our life together in this in the site so it just I don't know becomes an interesting issue of um, how, where it stands as as art so to speak um, yeah this is this is a bit complicated for us because we've been asked by several museums to show work or one uh, museum wants to buy. Or even the gallery like, show that we just did. Yeah, <laughs> and, and the gallery show is actually crazy. both of us. It's our first gallery for gallery show for both of us. And it actually felt very uncomfortable to do it. We, we wanted to do it as an experiment because in the future we just refused to do uh, any, any presentations like that. And um, well, I mean, the reason why we talk about it is because we talk about it all the time amongst ourselves. It's um, museums see, uh, well, it, uh, either, I don't know exactly what's happening, either museums see that there is actually something artistic going on on the web and they want to show it with all the problems of that, or they see themselves dying. And uh, in, in my point of view, modern art is very much on its last legs. And I think museums are looking for something to justify their own existence. And so net art becomes their first prey they're trying to do now and we feel sort of we don't need them they actually need us more than we do need them and it's always a little bit of a fight with uh, uh, those institutions because um, yes, it's the <coughs> website and that's the major thing it's, uh, the fulfillment is the audience which comes which <coughs> surfs by to see it um, but at the same time we're we're always very curious about <laughs> like these different things and I mean even in our client work it's just always been like oh well you know some client wants us to build a site for you know some stock brokerage and we're like did you see our work do you know what we do you know have you looked at it and they're like oh yeah we totally want you to work on this and we're like okay <laughs> you know you asked for it you know and um, we want it to be highly interactive full multimedia but yet very simple and accessible and compatible with that <laughs> shape too <laughs> <laughs> and so it becomes this thing where we just do things because we're just curious okay so what's this gonna what's gonna happen with this next you know and 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 um, yeah I think a lot of people who work on the web just have that inherent curiosity and and, and willingness to sort of just throw themselves into something and learn what they need to learn to 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 achieve whatever goal they may have or to uh, you know to earn money for example or to you know what